loneliness creates an atmosphere of contact. You have all heard of the desert experience of great ones. Every great one, every prophet, every mystic, every great teacher has to have that loneliness experience. It's so profound. In that loneliness, you are going to find the right path. It is that loneliness, that empty, empty, empty feeling that you are faced with only yourself that you will find the true essence of where your path is. In a Western society, we're afraid of loneliness. We fill our life with things that don't matter so that we don't feel lonely. Today, I'm going to make you comfortable with loneliness so that you reach for it, you search for it. You search for that pain inside of you that says, I am so darn lonely, I can't stand it. And then you're going to strive to make that connection. Because the teaching tells us we will never be lonely when we connect with our solar angel. What does it take to make that connection? What does it take? So it is a condition where you are going to isolate yourself, layer by layer, isolate yourself, Physically, emotionally, mentally, isolate, be lonely. Physically, what does it mean? Stop talking. We experience that here, and you can see in us. I say, let's stop talking, and then we turn around and say something to somebody sitting next to us. I do it, and I think, I just told everybody to be quiet, and I'm talking. <laughs> you see how ingrained it is in us? How disciplined we need to be to experience that loneliness of quiet, quiet. So physical quiet, physical calmness, being in tune with the inner rhythm that's going on so you can stop it at any time. Can you be lonely regarding food? Can you be lonely regarding friends? Can you be lonely from any input outside of you? Music, sound, your cell phone, email, yikes. Can you be lonely without any of those things so that you can ask yourself those important questions. Emotional loneliness is very difficult, very difficult. We're always looking to be connected emotionally with something that is outside of ourselves. This says loneliness is a precondition for contact. So imagine emotional loneliness, patterns, expectations, fears, griefs, Illusions, glamours, empty them out. Become empty of them. What's left? Well, we're going to find out. So imagine you go to the deserts, you drive to Sedona, for example, or you go to the Mojave Desert or anywhere, empty, and you think, how could life survive here? I can hardly breathe. And then when you just stand there long enough with no noise, you start hearing the sounds of life. You start seeing life under the sand. You start seeing that ripple of air on the grass that moves. Then you look inside of you. You'll see the life inside of you. Now let's talk about mental emptiness that is so difficult for us. The more trained our lower mind, the less empty it is. Okay? Because we fill it with information, books, readings, internet material. But to empty ourselves, that are not important. Have that quiet mind. Quiet mind in which you are going to find solutions. Can you do that? It's so hard. Our mind is the most difficult. And you know, the first step in scientific meditation is to quiet. To quiet yourself so you can make a link, a contact. Otherwise, you can't go anywhere. So in every meditation practice, that's the first thing, quiet your mind. Quiet your emotions, quiet your mind, link them together. So loneliness means then a deliberate attempt to be without external noises or internal noises that are a different vibration than your internal true being. Okay? You are creating a deliberate place inside of you that will act as a vacuum that will attract a higher frequency and vibration to you. Okay? So when people say, I can't meditate, I can't study, I don't know what to do, the first step, establish loneliness. 
turn things off. So you are going to feel the emptiness so that you can feel the majesty of all of life. Okay? That's when you feel it. So imagine experiences all of you have had. You go to the ocean. There's nobody at the beach. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody's gone home. People's radios are turned off. You just sit and look at the ocean. Ah. Something connects you. You feel alive, don't you? How about those of you who go camping and hiking or take photos in the mountains? You find yourself completely alone at 4.30 in the morning. The light is just coming out, right? The light is just coming up so you have that morning light. And you find meaning. You find God. You find your inner connection. You drive through the desert. You stop your car. You get out. The car, the engine is turned off. There's no music. There's no radio. You turn it off and you just sit in the seat of your car and you look outside. Wow. That's the kind of loneliness we're talking about, but deliberately, and you can do that. So what is that vibration of that loneliness? It is the removal of everything that is not in rhythm with your inner being. Something that beats outside of you eventually will pull your rhythm into it. You know that. If somebody comes and starts beating a drum that's a completely different rhythm from us, pretty soon we'll all be swinging to that drum. It captures you. It takes you, right? That's why it's so important we understand this rhythm part. So when we remove the artificial rhythms, we can establish our own. This is why in every spiritual teaching, what tools do we have? Meditation, prayer, retreat, fasting. My mother often said, fasting is not just not eating food. It is physical fasting, emotional fasting, mental fasting. It's a complete fast. It's not just about food. So these disciplines are given to us, disciplines for the three bodies, so that we learn the lesson of loneliness or emptiness. The more empty or lonely we are, the better our contact. Okay. This is Gita Saradarian, and I would like to thank you for your interest in this video lecture. We have books, booklets, and spiritual study courses on this very topic. Please visit us at tsgfoundation.org for more information on all TSG Foundation products and services. Thank you.